All right, everyone. So what we need to do in order to start working with e-commerce is we need a WordPress site. And as I said in last month's class, and I'll say for this month, uh, my ideal scenario is that everyone comes in here already with their own domain, so a .com or a .net or whatever website. So ideally, people should come in here with their own website. And then ideally, it should be a WordPress site. But that often, that never happens in these classes because just such a variety of people come to these classes. And so what I have to do is, what we have to do is, we need to work with a, with a WordPress site, a development WordPress site. That's, that's a, a site that's in our computer here as our virtual server. So if you did part one already, you know what I'm talking about here. If you're new to, part, to us in part two, what we need to do is we need to run this software, this free software called WAMP Server. WAMP Server creates a virtual server where we can then run WordPress. Once we set that up together, and we'll need to set it up every time we come in to a degree, then we'll be able to do the e-commerce stuff. So what I'm about to talk about is in sheet number four, remember in the network folder there's sheet number four and sheet number five, we're gonna look, we're gonna work on sheet number four together. Sheet number four talks about in the first section here archiving your site. We don't need to do this. We've already got a site. At the end of the day, we'll need to do this section, archiving the site. We're going to save our site. We're going to freeze it at a certain point so that then we can take it home with us or bring it back next week. Um, so this is already done for us. We've got a site from last month to work on. What we'll be doing is starting with part two or section two here, resurrect your site, which is we're going to bring the site back to life. I've got a site already for you to work with. I'll tell you the overview of what we're going to do here, then we'll do it together. So after we run WAMP server, we're going to go to phemyadmin to create a database. Then when we've got a database, we're going to take our file from last month and bring our site back to life, log in, and we've got a site so that we don't have to start all over. So step one is on your desktop, you're going to see an icon WAMP server, that purple that, that magenta W. Go ahead and double click it. You will not get any pop-up. You will not get anything that says welcome to WAMP server. You will not get any feedback. Except on the very bottom right, you might have seen a little red W that then became orange W, then a green W. If you didn't see it, if it, if it ran away, it's probably hidden inside of the double arrow there. Inside your double arrow, you should see a green W. Does everyone see a green W? Okay. So we need to uh, then click the green W. Just a regular old left click. Click the green W. And then click localhost. This should bring up our default web browser and take us to localhost, which is our virtual server. I think for some of you, it, what might happen is that a lot of tabs appear. Maybe another tab appears about Welcome to Opera or something. If it does close that, I don't know why that shows up also. Just close that and make sure you've only got the WAMP server tab. So if you got the WAMP server screen, this is the screen that tells you, congratulations, you're running WAMP server. You've got WAMP server running. This shows that we've got WAMP server running, and what we need to do is to create a database. Much of the modern uh, website software runs in conjunction with a database. WordPress needs a database. Joomla needs a database. Drupal needs a database. All of this modern web software needs a database. If you're using a classic web development tool like Dreamweaver, you don't need a database but then it's much harder to do e-commerce in Dreamweaver. So we've got WAMP server, which is a virtual server. And then we need to create a virtual database. Under Tools, at the bottom left, you want to click on PHP My Admin. That's our 
database creation management deletion tool. So click on PHP My Admin. And so here under PHP My Admin at the very top, there's a button for databases. These are our current databases. We'll need to click at the top databases. And then here it asks, create a database. We can give it any name we want. But we will call this as we were doing last month. We'll call it WordPress. Lowercase, no spaces. You can use uppercases if you want, but when we work with our site, you have to remember you use uppercases. And if you forget that stuff, well, it's easier just to keep it all lowercase and no spaces. So we're, we're writing the name of a database. It can be anything. It could be Kitty Cat. That'll still work. But here's our new database called WordPress. When you click Create, make sure you click Create, and you'll get the pop-up database. WordPress has been created. And you'll see on the left side, We've got a new database called WordPress, it's empty, and down here too. Did everyone get a database? Okay, we're going to minimize the web browser for a moment because we need to get our site from last month. We're not going to start over completely. We've got a site that we were working on last month. Although what we have to do, if you're new, what we have to do this every time. We have to create a database, run WAMP server, and so forth. But we will then resurrect our site to the last moment that we worked on it previously. Minimize the web browser. Let's go back to the network folder. So open computer, if you closed it. Computer, network location, classroom data, drive Z. Open that. Scroll down to my folder, Campos eCommerce 2. And this folder here, the only folder, that was the last version of our site that we worked on previously. I'm going to leave that window open there. And then you're going to open another computer window. So on one window, you've got the network, and on another window, Another computer window, we're going to go to the local disk C, C as in cat. So open local disk C. Scroll down to the WAMP folder, double click WAMP. You'll see a bunch of folders. You then want to open the www folder. Open the www folder, and now you want to drag the complete folder, not the stuff inside of it, the complete 2015-06-30 folder, drag the whole folder to the www folder. What you're doing there is you're getting a, an archived copy of our work from last month. So if you took last month's class, it should be familiar. If you're new, this is our process. And again, um, what I'm talking about here is basically in instructions number four. We logged into phpMyAdmin, we created a database, moved the folder into the www folder. Next, we'll proceed in a moment. But everyone copy that over? Can we use what we did on our sure. Yes, I forgot to say that. Good question. So if you want to work with your project from last time, that's fine. Just substitute your folder for my folder. But if you want to start with my folder, here it is in the network. This is optional, but I recommend it. Uh, let's rename that folder. The folder that you dragged into your www folder, let's rename it simply to WordPress, lowercase, no spaces. The reason for that is because now our addresses will be more manageable. We'll be able to go to localhost slash WordPress. 
instead of localhost slash 2015-0630 space victors space bakery. So now it's a short address. I'm going to close the network folder. I'm done with that. And now we should have a copy of last month's site in the www folder. My next instruction on the sheet. Number four. In your web browser, access the installer.php file. For example, http colon slash slash localhost slash slash WordPress. That's the name of the folder we just put into the WW folder. So if you literally write my site, that won't work. Slash installer.php. So back in your web browser, http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress slash installer.php. Just because my instruction literally says my site, you should also, you know, logically understand why we're not writing my site. Because the folder of the project is called WordPress. It's not called my site. And then press enter. If it worked, then you've got a new screen that says duplicator. If it didn't, you get an error. Did anyone get an error? A file not found. <coughs> so we're on our virtual server called localhost, specifically on our website called WordPress, accessing the file installer.php. My sheets then continue, my sheet continues to then say name is the name of the database you created in step two, which was called what? WordPress. User is root, and password is empty. There's no password there. Okay, so leave uh, host alone, leave action alone. Name, name of existing or new database, WordPress user, a valid database username, and my sheet says it's root. And password, a valid database user password. My sheet says it's empty, it's blank. Don't write anything there, not even a space. Technically a space is not empty. So nothing there. It's bringing me up to Google. Make sure you, if it's not behaving, type the HTTP part of your address, localhost, and it's not a .com, so I'll check you in a moment. Click Test Connection, and if you see Success, we want to then, at the bottom left, click I have read all the warnings and notices, because this is going to bring back a site, and if you're not careful, you could override, you could overwrite an old site that exists. That's why it says, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes, I read all the warnings. Click Run Deployment. Click OK one more time. Let that process. So what we're doing is using the duplicator plugin to resurrect a site that we worked on last month. And I use this duplicator plugin. My company uses it with real clients. So those that I've shown you a moment ago, Kistex Coco, Elsa Valencia, and Swap Dots, we use this plugin on all of those clients. We use it to make a perfect copy of the whole site. Because a modern website is not just a collection of HTML and JPEGs, it's also a database. Maybe it's you know PHP files, maybe it's complicated stuff. And so you're going to need something that makes a perfect copy, and Duplicator is one of the plugins that does that. And Duplicator is free, so we use it for our clients. There's many other solutions to back up a WordPress site. I can't tell you which one is better, which one is worse. I can only say what has worked for us and do a recommendation. Let's see here. Click through. 
the default settings to resurrect the site. After it succeeds, click on each of the four tasks listed. Okay. Well, here it's just saying, uh, here's some settings, just click Run Update. When you get to the screen, just click Run Update. And notice at the top we've had Deploy, Update, and Test. These are the four steps that my instruction says here. After it succeeds, click on each of the four tasks lift, listed. When you complete all four tasks, your site has been resurrected and is ready to use. Um, just realized something. I guess I should change the instructions just a little bit. Um, might not matter, but notice here also what we did last month. We had to activate the rewrite module, which is allowing for pretty fi uh, pretty pretty addresses. The default WordPress address scheme is that we'll have victor.com slash p equals 97 instead of victor.com slash about. Instead of having victor.com slash shop, it would have been victor.com slash p7748. It would have numbers. And those numbers are not good for search engines. So what we talked about last month was changing our addresses to pretty links. But in order for that to work, we needed to activate the rewrite module. So I forgot to triple check it, but I think what we should do is this step actually here before proceeding with 7 and 8. <clears throat> so maybe write on your paper, add an arrow, and put it after 6. I think we should do this first before 7 and 8. So what I'm saying here is we need to activate a little feature of WAMP server called rewrite module in order for the pretty links to work. So let's proceed with these four items here. Click on your WAMP server icon. So it's hidden inside of the double arrow most likely. Click on that. Click one time on it. Click on Apache. Apache modules. That's a misspelling. Apache modules. And then down to rewrite module. It's alphabetical, so let's find rewrite module. Yeah, it should be Apache modules, not services. Uh, we're in Apache, Apache modules, and then rewrite module. I guess I'll have to put out a version 3. <laughs> Click on the rewrite module. You might see that it goes between red and orange and then back to green. Sometimes it's odd, but sometimes you have to do it twice. It seems to have worked with everyone, possibly. Did everyone get back their green W? All right, so if it did, then we can proceed with the next one. In just a Okay, so that was our rewrite module. It's active. That then allows us to proceed uh, with what I had here, seven. Okay, so we've got we've got uh, three items here. Install report. Well, great. Nothing bad happened. I don't get all of this, but I didn't get any uh, errors or warnings. Good. Number two, save permalinks. So click on that. 
and then it's asking for the login. Uh, the login information from the previous class was username uh, admin. I'm going to write it up here, but uh, then the password is password with a capital P. I'm just writing it here for you to see it. So the username is admin and the password is password, capital P. Obviously a terrible password, but just for this class it's good enough. And technically also username admin, that's also a terrible username for an admin. Um, right now we're focusing on using WordPress and setting up this the site and such. We'll talk a little bit more about more cybersecurity as time goes on a bit. Yes. No, I'm writing it here so that everyone can see because if I write it here, no one can see. So go ahead and admin and password that and log in. We're logging in so that we get to this screen to confirm that we're using the pretty addresses. These addresses, also known as permalinks, the default would have been up here. The default would have been a website with numbers. And the search engines don't like that. So if you want, if you want your store to be found, and it's not being found by Google or Yahoo or Bing, one detriment could be that your addresses are not human readable. If your website still has numbers like that, the search engines don't know what to do with that and therefore don't rank you well. Here in WordPress we can easily say, and this is a recommended one, selected, selecting post name will then give you these pretty names. Victor.com slash about us, Victor.com slash shop, Victor.com slash returns instead of numbers. So all we really need to do here, you don't, you shouldn't need to change anything, just confirm it's on post name. And then just click Save at the bottom. You might get a bunch of messages up at the top. Don't worry about those yet. Did you notice we got two tabs? One is the Duplicator tab and one is this Permalinks tab. Close the Permalinks tab to go back to Duplicator. Okay, we did step one, we did step two. Step three would be to browse every screen of our site to make sure that <coughs> the resurrection of our site went through okay. Uh, we don't have time for that. We're going to assume it worked. And in 99% of the sites that my company has worked with, we've never had a problem bringing the site back to life. We did have one time a problem, and it did take a lot of hours to figure it out. And, you know, we're kind of experts, so... Um, if you want to fully test your site, you could. I'm not going to do number three. I'm going to assume we did number three. And I'm going to say usually this will work. Uh, like 98% of the time. How do you know your site didn't work? Well, that's when you start to use it. So let's assume it did. Because it usually will. Skip to step number four. File cleanup. Click on that. It's going to say, are you sure you want to delete these files? What's going to happen is it's going to delete the original archive files of your, of your currently resurrected site. The reason we would want to do that is because we don't want to accidentally revert back to this point. If we worked on the site for a week, for a month, for a year, and those files were still there, there is a possibility that you can revert back to your site to what you did a week ago, a year ago. So that's what number four is saying. Clean up those old files to start at this point. So click OK. That takes you into your site. It just gives you some feedback. There's no OK button or anything. It just tells you successfully remove these files. And now I can close the WordPress Duplicator tab. I'm done with Duplicator. Close that tab and we'll stay in this Tools tab.
hover over the name of the site at the top left, Victor's Bakery, and visit site. Here we go. That was the site that we worked on last month, Victor's Bakery, East Lake's premier vegan bakery, from our kitchen to you. So we'll take a moment to make sure everyone's at this step. If not, you don't want to fall further behind than this. Raise your hand if it worked. Okay, great. Raise your hand if anyone needs a little help. <laughs> okay. That's good. So it seems to have worked for everyone. If it didn't, that's okay. I'll help you one-on-one uh, -on -one if you need it. But here is the site as we left it. It's been a while, so I'm going to take a quick tour of it one more time to remember what it's about. Uh, I've got a home page, an About Us screen, a blog screen, social search. You might have a video at the bottom. It may or may not play. That's okay. So it's a fully uh, functional site, various features. If you're new, one of the big things to memorize early on is switching between the front end of the site and the back end. Right now we're at the front end. We're looking at what the regular user sees when they visit your site. Um, we want to switch back to the back end, which is the control panel, the dashboard, whatever you want to call it, where we create pages, add and remove products, change our shipping and handling, all of that stuff, the back end. So the way we do that in WordPress, we can simply uh, click on the name of our site at the top left. That switches you back to the dashboard. You can also click on it again, and it takes you back to visit the site. So if I say, let's go to the dashboard, well, that's the back end. That's the control panel. Let's look at, the, let's look at our site. So that would be going back to visit site. So we should be able to navigate that easily switching back and forth between those two aspects of the site. One of the last things we did last time, last month, was to talk about some plugins and some recommendations and such, and those items are in the network folder in part one, so you can review them. But I do want to mention a couple of things here. I'm in the dashboard, and I've got three items that have popped up here. Please configure your Google Analytics settings. That's going to keep bothering me. We will not do this because you need a Google Analytics account. We're not going to talk about that in this class. I teach a class at this college about SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, getting your website found, ranking it better on Google, keeping track of your traffic and statistics and all of that. That's where I talk about Google an Analytics in that class. So that's going to continue to bother us up there. I'm going to ignore it. We're not going to be able to set this up because we really can't with our knowledge. The second item, WordPress SEO by Yoast has been updated to version 2.21. So that's uh, about Updates. I mentioned about updates last time. I'll mention it again in just a moment, so let me get back to this. It's telling us there's an update. And then we've got here, huge SEO issue. You're blocking access to robots. And then if you read that, what it says is there's an option set inside of our um, WordPress that says uh, shield us from the search engines. If we were a real site, victor.com, Kiestexcoco.com, uh, dogwalkers.org. If we were a, a real website, then this would be a big issue. This means we're saying to the search engines, don't pay attention to us. And that would be very bad, of course, because then no one would find you online. We're in a development environment. This current website, this WordPress website, does not exist as a real website. It only exists on your computer. No one can access it. That's why the address up here is simply localhost. It's not localhost.com slash WordPress. 
That would mean it's a real site on the internet. This is just on your computer. So I'm going to ignore this. Yes, this is a huge issue, but we're not a real website on a real server yet. So you can click to ignore. I won't, because when I put this on the real server, I might forget to do what it's telling me to fix. So I'm going to leave that there. It is going to bug me, but I'm going to leave it. Because if I do put the site online and I don't turn that on correctly, my site might be lost to the search engines. One of the things I also mentioned on the last day was about updates. So it looks like we've got two updates. We left the class with a totally updated site two weeks ago, and now in two weeks there's been some updates. Let's check out those updates. So if you see under updates here, click on that, or if you see the little spinning arrow, click on that. You can see what updates we have. Let's see. We don't. Uh, WordPress is fine. We don't need an update for WordPress. We've got uh, the Akismet plugin and the Jetpack plugin. Both of those need updates, and there's no theme updates. So briefly, I said previously. Regarding updates, if you get a bunch of updates, you have the main WordPress core software. That's up, updated every once in a while. The current version is 4.2.2. .2. You also have plugins, which give you extra features, such as a shopping cart. That might have updates. And then we've got the theme, which is the design of the site. That might have an update. And all of these probably come from different companies, different developers. So there's no set schedule. You're not going to see all your updates on a certain day. You're going to range between is it a theme, is it a plugin, what developer, etc. And so my recommendation was if you get if you have the option for all three of those plugins, uh, all three of those updates, I would recommend that you first do the WordPress software update. That's the core foundation of everything. So I would do an update for that one first. We don't have any at the moment, so we're fine. Second, I would then do any theme updates. That's the design, the whole look of your site. I would do any theme updates second. And then I would do the plugin updates, and within the plugins, I would start with the most important one because you can select to do them all at once and it'll just do them alphabetically and my company we used to do that until that failed until a client site messed up halfway through the updating it updated a couple of not that important up plugins and then it froze on an important one and the site was stuck on maintenance mode whenever you do any update your site becomes inactive in maintenance mode and we had a little bit of a, of a time fixing that. So my recommendation then is about these plugins. Start with the most important one, the one that is most mission critical for your site to function. Like we don't have the shopping cart plugin yet, but that's often the one I would do first. Update that one. Test the site. Is it still working like it's supposed to? Does everything still function? If it does, great. Move on to the next plugin. If it doesn't, we've got that duplicator archive that can bring our site back to life. If you're really paranoid, what you can do is, let's say you have not updated in two weeks. You can make a duplicator archive right now and save that somewhere safe. Update the core WordPress software. Test it, it works. Make another duplicator archive. Save that one offline. Then update your theme. Test that it works. Make a duplicate archive of that one. Save it offline. And then go in and start to do your plugin updates so that if any of your plugins mess up and you resurrect, you're resurrecting to a fully updated WordPress software and theme, and then you just need to deal with updating your plugins. Yes, more work, but when something goes wrong, you'll be glad you got those extra copies of your site. How do you make the archives? It's in my sheet number four, the first section. And we'll do it together at the end of the day, of course.
In this case, we've got two updates, Akismet and Jetpack. In your opinion, before I tell you, which would you say is more important for us to update? Why? What does Akismet do? Remind me. Spam protection, vulnerability to some degree, sure. Anyone remember what Jetpack does? A lot of things. A lot of things. That's the one I would recommend. That's the one that I would say is more important. Jetpack is the one that has a lot of moving pieces. Jetpack is the one that's got all those little modules. That one's got another sort of like um, security protection thing built in. That one's got your publicize options. That one's got your login enhancement and all of that. That's the more complicated one. That's the one I would recommend of these two. So let's say we're going to do our Jetpack update. I want to select it. Click Update Plugin. Notice it's enabling maintenance mode. So right now, if someone were to have visited our site, it would say some basic maintenance message. And then eventually this will come back to life automatically. Mine is still thinking. There it is. Jetpack updated. There's details if you want to see them. Disabling maintenance mode. Return to updates. Return to WordPress updates. Now, I did... A lot of people said Akismet because of the vulnerabilities. And that might not be the wrong answer, depending. Uh, I forgot to say, well, if I'm not here to tell you which is the right one, how would you figure that out? The, you would have to think about what is the functionality of the plugin. When we talk about the, when we set up the e-commerce plugin, that's one of the most important plugins of our site. If the shopping cart doesn't work, I'm losing money. So that's the one I'm going to update first. Some of these other ones, like a Twitter plugin or a spam plugin and such, you have to decide how important it is. And part of the way to help you with that is if you read what's new in that version. This is version 3.1.2. The current one is 3.1.3. I forgot the numbers of Jetpack. But you can click to view those details. And oftentimes they'll be a little technical, but hopefully Let's see, notify users when their account status changes after previously being successfully set up. This should help any users who are seeking sorry, who are seeing blank Akismet settings. Okay, so something about users having problems, so updated a week ago. Sounds good. Go ahead and update. That one should update faster. Return to the updates. So now all of our updates have been dealt with. Any questions so far? We should test this after. Yes. So that would entail visiting your site and going from page to page, but in our particular case, no big deal if we have to start again, but obviously in your site, you would then take some time to test it. We'll do one more thing and then we will uh, work with. setting up the, the shop. Uh, this particular theme looks okay, but it's a bit old. It has been updated. This theme is an official WordPress theme, and they update it. But maybe style-wise, function-wise, it's a bit old. So what we're going to do is switch to another theme, and then we're going to move on. So um, if I go back if you're not already there, under the dashboard, go to the dashboard, we'll go to Appearance Themes. <coughs> 
and I've got some built-in themes. A little later we can talk about more themes and uh, premium themes. But I want to activate the newest official WordPress theme. We've currently got 2013 active, and there's also 2014 and 2015. So if you hover over 2015, let's click activate. Click activate and then visit site. So now we've got a completely different design. All of our content is still there, pretty much, but now our design is different. I've actually got them both here to compare. There's the old design. Notice it had a horizontal menu bar, a main content area, and then a footer. The 2015 has a sidebar with the menu bar there. Content area is on the right. Social media icons are, are active. There's the spot for the video. There's no footer. So our content is still there. It's just been it's just been rearranged.